Hello team, welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, Jonathan MSP. This is Ukraine War Frontline update for the 24th of uh, April 2024. Uh, some people telling me that both my videos this morning or today have been too quiet. Hopefully uh, this is okay. I've changed some settings even though, even though I hadn't previously changed anything. Sometimes computers do weird things. They're supposed to be just zeros and ones, but sometimes I think they're zeros, ones and an errant hamster. Uh, but who knows? Right, let's get to the front line. First, we'll stop off at the key. If you don't know what the lines mean on the map, check out the key on the screen at the moment. Thanks to JR, who's done the video, has done the um, the mapping again. What an awesome human being. Kupiansk to Svatova to Kremina. This northeastern axis has seen no change again. This is a very stable part of the front line, at least according to the mapping sources. I don't know how active these front line areas are, if at all. I mean, it'll be positional if if anything. It might be more activity down in the Leman direction from uh, from Kremina area. So it's moving west from Kremina there. Then this Versk front line, we did see Bilohorivka on on the map quite a few times over the last few weeks, but that seems to have quietened down as well as Bilohorivka, Vaseli, Berestva area here. Uh, and then we come to Chesiv Yar, and actually it's been fairly stable there, all things considered, although I think the stability there doesn't mean it's been quiet. I think it's been very active. Uh, yesterday, there were some blue pins in this area from the different mappers uh, there wasn't a tweet out at the time but here surat maps the pro-russian mapper said the ukrainian army recaptured a series of positions between Ivaniska and Klitschivka. Uh, so that's really good that the, the defense isn't just, you know, sitting there and soaking up the Russian pressure, which means they're only going to go backwards. They are pushing forward in certain places and that keeps Russians then less able to, to be pushing on themselves as they have to think about defensive uh, moves in the area. So good news that the Ukrainians are uh, pushing back or at least attempting to push back in a number of places there or at least one place uh he he then we come down to sorry uh avdivka where you can see an awful lot of pins some different color pins here but it's not looking great around both the novel konyove area the uh, um ocheretnye area uh, over here and indeed the Bedici area just here. So it seems like Surat maps and Deep State maps both agree that there's quite a lot of change in this area. Uh, we'll go, we'll start with Ocheretni. They're still talking, which is the one in the middle here, they're still talking about this being a bit of a disaster as a result of Ukrainians pulling out without telling anyone certain units they're not doing what they were supposed to and the Russians just massively capitalized and now they're pushing on Ocheretni but also uh, other small settlements like Novobakhmatyvka here and they Russians really have capitalized on on that uh, so let's talk about this unfortunately the village of Ocheretny Donetsk Oblast in the Avdivka axis was totally captured by the Russians now the infernal battles continue outside the village there were attempts to counter-attack but they were unsuccessful effing 115th mechanized brigade so that's a result of that brigade pulling out without uh, permission and then moving on to the next source, we have uh, Christopher Miller here saying a blunder during a recent rotation of Ukrainian forces allowed Russian troops to make a swift five kilometer gain, capture Ocheretnye village and move towards Ukraine's newly fortified defenses. Unfortunately, quote, unfortunately, the enemy managed to take advantage of the situation is a quote he has in, I think, his own article in the Financial Times. Uh, Russia threatens to step up attacks on Western weapons in Ukraine. So general article, but also including what's going on in this part of the Avdivka axis. Here we have Max 23, uh, quoting from Deep State, the leadership of the 115th Mechanized Infantry Brigade is to blame for the failure of Ocheretny defence, allowing significant losses in killed, wounded and missing. At the same time, officer of the 59th Mechanized Brigade, Serhii Sekotsky, said that fighting continues in the area. The situation is under control uh, of the uh, Ukrainian armed forces. Uh, it is not been a good experience for the Ukrainians there. I mean, this was Surat Map's first uh, one from yesterday that I didn't share with you. Russian army continues advancing uh, in uh, Ocheretnye and controls 40% of the locality due to the loss of the high ground. Loss of the high ground, the Ukrainian army retreated from the position uh, on the southern outskirts of the village. 
uh, and that also includes retreating from Nova Bakhmativka, which is about to fall under Russian control. Moreover, the Russian forces are about to take Semenivka as troops reach the last trench system and houses of the locality. So that's further down uh, here, or oops, uh, just in this area. Uh, so that is what that pin refers to. That's over the Derna River. And Deep State Map agreeing that the Russians are at least in part of Semenivka across that area. Uh, of of land by between the two ponds there um so that is yeah not good news for the ukrainians there but yeah no Novobakhmativka and here uh Ocheretny being a bit of an issue a bit of rejigging there for the uh for Syriac maps just in uh, on the edge of Novobakhmativka but anyway uh then the second one from Surat maps uh, this one today coming out saying the situation north and e west of Avdivka taking advantage of the collapse of the Ukrainian army at Ocheretny. The Russian army captured Altcom brick factory and now control and, and sorry, new urban areas, thus taking control over 60 percent of the locality. So this is the claim that they are now in control of the brick factory to the north of the railway here going. The railway goes through Ocheretny. They are just pushing on. Uh, and seeming to be clearing out all of the settlement without uh, too much of an issue. Um, the claim continues, in addition to the southern village of Novobak Matipka was completely taken, and combats are very close to the neighbouring Soloviove. Uh, some kilometres south of it, Russian forces re-entered again the cemetery area of Bedici. Moreover, troops increased the salient east of Novokonyove by taking new positions on of the flanks and cut the supply route that connects Keramik to Novokonyove, urban association with the H-20 road towards Konstantinivka. Okay, so let's put all of this uh, on our map. So, yeah, we see that they're making gains around um, Novobakhmativka, then south towards Bedici, and then indeed at Bedici, some gains there uh, up to the river. This is pretty much the source of the river. Uh, and so if they can get further to the west here, that becomes a problem for the, the Ukrainians, more of a problem. And then down at Semenivka and up here at Novokonyove, they are making some gains towards this road. Um, and also the Keramik to Novo Konyove, uh road here. Um, so it, it's all it's not it's not looking particularly good for the Ukrainians as according to those two mappers. Only a tiny bit of confirmation there from Andrew Perpetua, but his mapping might be a little bit behind the other two. Uh, they don't all map at the same time, right? So quite often you get what looks like a game one day, but it's actually one of the mappers start just finding the evidence that agrees. Uh, that means that their map conforms then again with the other mappers so it can be staggered like that it, it is it is certainly a, just a huge challenge in that northern area of the Avdivka, Avdivka front it seems to have calmed down a little bit around this Tonyenka Umanska Natalove uh, area so that's I guess something I don't know how uh, heavy the fighting is there and then we come down to Krasno Harivka where you can see Andrew Perpetua has the Russians not in control of this southern uh, suburb there. And I think that's fairly significant. So we have really big difference between the two mappers, Andrew Perpetua and Surat Maps here. Surat Maps having the Russians controlling, you know, quite large amounts of Krasnoharivka. Andrew Perpetua, not nearly that amount. In fact, really none of uh, the settlement, apart from a few of these houses uh, in that southern suburb. The, remember... That's not to say that Russian troops aren't here, and that's the difference between the methodology of these two mappers. Andrew Perpetua will say, right, they're fighting there. It doesn't mean they control it because Ukrainians are fighting there too. But as soon as Russians are in any place, uh, Surat Maps puts that under Russian control, and it's simply not the case often. Uh, sometimes is. This is much more likely to be grey zone with just heavy fighting taking place. Uh, it's not to say that the Russians won't take it, of course, um, but yeah. And then we come down to Marienka, where you can see that... Uh, there's been a little bit of, and I did did kind of predict this because there was quite quite a few um, mappers saying di well, all the mappers saying different things around here, but there were other mappers outside of these map mappers saying that actually the Russian line really goes something like that, uh, and this area is a grey zone, and actually 
uh, we've got Surat maps winding things back a little for the Russians there. But on the other hand, we have all the mappers showing uh, increases. In fact, Surat maps is the one with the least Russian increases in this area as uh, south of um, Marienka and on the way to Pobieda, uh, or at least on the, on the way to the road that runs east-west there, the Russians making some significant gains. Uh, so we'll pop in and look at some of, or just one of the other sources here. Uh, this is Surat Map saying that the Russian army made new advances southeast of Heyerivka. On the other hand, map corrections were made inside the locality as Russian artillery is shelling the schools previously taken but lately retaken by the Ukrainian army. And this is often how they sell it, which is like, oh, it was retaken, where it quite often isn't the case that the Ukrainians retaking it. It's that the Russians never really had it in the first place. But, you know, no one likes admitting mistakes and all that. Um, so that is the situation in the usual places. And it, it seems like actually Chesiv Yar, the Russians have slowed down a little bit there. That was the, the big worry like a week or so ago as the Russians are making significant gains there. But it's it's all about what's happening up here, uh, which is, is a huge shame because it needn't have happened. It seems to be as a result of some Ukrainian mistakes or a unit or a um yeah I don't, I don't know what size of the unit but the 115th not doing what they're supposed to and that's led to really a fairly significant gain I mean really really that's this whole salient there uh that uh that has taken place broadly as a result of that or largely as a result of that and then Krasnohurivka being uh, an issue and Marienka, Marienka, Krasnohurivka and south of there a bit. Novomikhailivka, no changes there, even though the Russians have broadly taken the whole of the settlement. They might be sort of taking a breather, reconstituting before they work out how to go about taking Paris Kavivka. And then, of course, on to Konstantinivka, which is um, one of their major goals in that particular local area. Then we come across past Veliko Novosilka to a very small gain in the... Uh, Robotina area here we have um, and we'll bring it up here Surat map saying that in the last eight days the Russian army has made minimal advances southeast of Robotina the uh, situation on this front remains generally static uh, and I'll broadly agree with that uh, just a few small changes uh, to a field there just south of the town of Robotina uh, Andrew Perpetua not so I mean there's a really big difference actually between the map is here if you look from the extent uh, north south that's a difference of about uh, 2.65 kilometers um, but then if you take it to over there it's more like 1.6 kilometers so either way the, the there is a um a difference between the two mappers is quite substantial there although andrew perpetua does admit that the russians have gained a little uh, uh, further to the south of where the surat maps say their gains uh, are have been made anyway uh, that situation in that neck of the woods we're now going to go and look at Krinky. nothing has changed there there's no news coming out of Krinky particularly or Kazachi Lahiri where we saw a flag had been raised or possibly even dropped from a drone so it kind of confuses you you think oh the Ukrainians are there when in reality they probably aren't um, but anyway this gives you a sense of uh, the terrain here and what war does to a place. This is Krinky in a Russian occupied part of Kherson. The Ukrainian army has been holding a bridgehead on the left bank of the Dnipro for six months now. Is it that long? Goodness me, that's quite incredible, isn't it? Uh, I'm going to turn the sound off. Um, but this is this is what it looks like at the moment. Remember, the, there was a lot of ice around here during the winter. It's very difficult to cross. Now that's kind of thawed out in the main. It's uh, definitely springtime there. Uh, but look at the look at the poor forestry for poor forest these days it's just been reduced to uh sticks it's, it's heartbreaking and there as you can see in the top half is crinky crinky is a series of piles of rubble and broken machinery just incredible like that you are fighting between uh one broken house and another offering very little in terms of cover so that that's that's the site of the the crinky bridgehead it is it must be pretty awful operating around there and of course i mean here you've got a drone freely fr flying around doing nice hd coverage of the area there's all sorts of drones flying around there and that will include 
FPV drones waiting to find a target and hit. So it just must be it must be awful to be sent to that that uh, front to do uh, to do your warfare. Just I, I get a sense of great vulnerability just moving around those places. Anyway, uh, that's the cranky front line. So that's all of the front line update for today. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to have time to do the geopolitical video for my news update today because I'm speaking to Jake Bro and it, my last military one was so long, but I'll see how it goes. I don't want to give too much content for you guys. Anyway, take care, everybody. Speak to you soon.